Local pride goes out the window as Blackburn Rovers fluff their lines down at Bluefield Road. It's Blackpool that are reigning supreme over in Lancashire. I'll tell you how it happened next. Right, folks, back again with another match review. Looking back at Blackburn Rose's latest match over in the championship as we took on Blackpool, and we'll get to that in just one second. If you do, where you been? Smash your subscribe and I get your bang out today with all things championship related, Blackburn Rose related, world football related in a bloody car. That's right, of course. Yeah, I'm on the road right now at work. Uh, just digested the shit show that was Blackburn Rovers uh, match up against Blackpool. We'll tell you how it all happened in a one of it, one of one second. Of course, I want a big, big shout out to my VRPs. I'm talking about my three Hans, boys and girls. You know who you are, the VRPs, brother from another mother. If you are interested in helping out the channel, check out the link down below, patreoncom forward But anyway, yes, Rovers failed to deliver. That's right, two-one loss against Blackpool. You know what? We haven't lost against them in a long, long time, but not anymore. Blackpool come out singing and dancing uh, with the with the local bragging rights. <coughs> so let's, of course, uh, see how all that panned out and break it down with, of course, a look at the numbers. So let's get into it then, shall we, of course. Uh, yeah, 2-1 it was, final score, Blackburn Rovers. Uh, a quick fire goal by Blackpool early doors as well. Uh, Shane Lavery. Got the opening goal. Of course, he. I think he's the top goal scorer at the moment for Blackpool. I think that's his seventh maybe now this season. And we did, we did do the watch along uh, for this game. And somebody just mentioned, said, you've got to keep an eye on that Lavery fella. He will score a goal today or he's the man to keep an eye out. And lo and behold, right on cue, uh, Shane Lavery came up uh, and gave uh, Blackpool a lead. And it was a deservedly explosive lead. Uh, I'll tell you about our uh, lovely display of uh, uh, defenders uh, this uh, in the first half in a minute. Um, but anyway, there was a quick fire double. In fact, uh, Shane Lavery got himself substituted not too long after that. Uh, and I've upstepped Jerry Yates. who's only scored one goal this season, scored a shit ton of goals last season in League One. But uh, just like bosses, they come in twos. Here they come, Jerry Yates on the 24th minute as uh, Blackpool took a 2-0 lead. And at that point, it looked game bloody over. Uh, fortunately, in the second half, we did get uh, an early consolation goal. It was big bad boy Burton Diaz on the 50th uh, minute. That's his 10th of the season. That is, of course, double digits uh, for the man, the myth, the legend. That is Burton Diaz. But it was a, a tale of uh, 245s. In fact, no, not really a tale of 245s. Kind of a tale of 245s. The first 45, we were shocking uh, to say there were any second. There was a bit of fight, a bit of desire. But ultimately, we just didn't have that quality today. And we were let down by the players at the back. Of course, the defensive core for today was shit. Even Kaminsky couldn't uh, uh, keep them out uh, from scoring today. Uh, Magalore, I know it's desperate times for Blackburn Rovers. But, um, uh, you know, I want to see the lads succeed. But it's been a couple of games now. And, and it shows the lack of quality we do have there once Daryl Lennon is out. Scotty Warren could probably do a good job. Maybe set it back. As I'm not too convinced on Carter either at the moment. I'm still the jury's out on both of those two youngsters. I think for Magalore's sake, uh, he, needs a, he needs a League One loan. Uh, maybe uh, do a Burton, do a, a, a Crew Alexandra, do a reverse Pickering and go to Crew or something like that. Just get another, get a season on loan. I'd say go in January, get out on loan. And then, uh, and then come back maybe for next season because he just looks a little bit out of depth. He looked clueless, like he was running around like a headless chicken and, 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 and it just didn't make any sense. I don't know what position he was playing, if he was maybe playing right back. Uh, the beggar's belief, uh, the beggar's belief of, of his role today. Hayden Carter, again, looked very, very like out of his like overwhelmed, overwhelmed with what's going on around him. So uh, Ayala, poor Ayala, on his own pretty much. Um, but uh, yeah, Rovers' defensive uh, frailties let us down today. Possession-wise, we had more possession than, than uh, Blackpool did today. 51 to their 49. We had more shots as well, 16 to their 8. Five of them were off target. And that means 11 of them were on target. One of them went in the back of the net, of course. Uh, just two shots off target for Blackpool. They made it, they made it count from their uh, limited chances. Um, corners, two to, their, to our nine. We had a lot, lot of corners. More free kicks. 
as well. Uh, but we found out offside more often than they do. Let's take a look at the, the, the data in a bit more detail. Overall, we talked about the 51%. Um, uh, what else? What else? What else? What else have we got down here? I think we just uh, bossed the aerial duels. We bossed the uh, duels on the ground. Uh, we lost possession more than they did. We had more dribbles than they did as well. Uh, they had more passes, uh, long balls as well, coming more often from back ball. And that's, of course, both home, uh, both in the first and second half. First half, 57% possession going for Blackpool. They got it. They got their noses in front. And, of course, that was good enough for them. 57 for them, 43 for Rovers. Seven shots in the first half. Three of them on target, one of them off target. Uh, a couple of them in the back of the net. Yeah, of course, they were uh, big chances. They had two big chances. They missed one of them and converted the other as well. Rovers had nothing, nothing to get excited about in the first half. Second half, though, was much, much better for Rovers. We had 60% possession compared to their 40. 11 shots to their just one. Just the one shot second half. They uh, were a ghost in the second half. Uh, three corners for Rovers. Um, one big chance. Uh, zero miss. We took that one big chance. That was, of course, Diaz scoring the goal. And, of course, uh, the other stats going in favour of Rovers. Blackpool were a little bit un un a little bit unlucky, of course, with their with their own team selection. With of course three forced uh, in uh, three forced subst uh, substitutions, losing um, losing Lavery early doors. Uh, I think Keo got substituted at halftime, and the goalkeeper had to get pulled as well. So not great for them, but uh, a massive massive boost to their uh, survival hopes this campaign. Uh, in the championship. Let's take a look at the start 11, 11 then shall we? Uh, Maxwell's between sticks, Epkate at the back, Keo, Garbutt, uh, and Sterling at the back there with uh, Ryan Wintle, uh, Kenny Duggle, uh, Kishi Anderson, Josh Bowler, Gary Dean, and Shane Lowry up top. Uh, kick it on forward. Let's take a look at uh, their substitutions. Stuart Morgan did come on, James Husband, and Jerry Yates, of course, came on, showing his worth. Uh, at long last, getting the second goal in the championship so far. As for Rovers, uh, Kaminsky between six, Ayala, Carter, Pickering, and Magalore. We also had um, Travis Rothwell, Gallagher, Brereton Diaz, uh, Bukaru, and Tyree Stolen. So those were the, the, the starters. Then we had Teo Wadun came on, looks a player, he does. Uh, Radicadra looks a bag of shit right now. And Danny Butterworth, again, I don't think he's ready. Um, I think he needs a loan, a decent loan. He's only ranked 55 grand. That's how much he's worth. Uh, let's take a look at some of the shot grid there. Blo Rovers are in the blue. Uh, Blackpool did go for a long-range spectacular from halfway. Kaminsky was uh, was A-OK -okay with that one. Uh, what else do we see here? Touches. More touches for Rovers compared to Blackpool. Uh, more dribbles as well. But we did lose possession more often than they did. Some other stats and figures there for your leisure. Let's take a look at the heat maps. Of course, at the top there, that is Blackpool. Of course, uh, less less touches. And, and, and regarding uh, the the old uh, the old heat map here, keeper was very very busy. Uh, according to this as well, Astro Rovers. Looks like they covered more grass than, than Blackpool, but uh, ultimately that doesn't amount for nothing. Let's take a look at the start the match ratings then. Again, this is from a third party, not my own. Uh, Sam Gallagher was injured as well, was substituted, I think, second half or before second half. Uh, the man of the match for Rovers' regard was John Buckley, despite uh, Diaz getting a goal. Uh, Buckley with a, with a nine. He was involved, or an eight, sorry. Uh, he was involved in a lot of things, as was Daniel Alala. But the man of the match, I think, must go on the other way, does it? No. The man of the match is John Buckley. So it does say, according to this, that we probably deserve that. And, of course, down there is a timeline of the events uh, for the match itself. But ultimately, Blackburn Rovers just failed to show up today. Failed to show up, especially at the back. We have got some concerns when Darren Enner is not there. Got concerns when Niambi is not there. Uh, but fortunately, the international break has come possibly at the right time to maybe get him back. He, I think he was touch and go for making this game. But I think the next week, two weeks, uh, and he'll be back, uh, hopefully back into full fitness. And maybe we can respond uh, with a match up against Coventry on the receiving end of the international break. As for the right back, Niambi, of course, should be back as well. He was uh, uh, f uh, forced out with concussion. He, I think he's not going to Namibia duty. So he should be fit, fit and raring to go for the return as well. Hopefully, John Reckon can sell as well to give us a, give us some comp competition for that right hand side. But ultimately, the thing is, is that we're still scoring goals. It's just like again, our defence is dog shit, and we got ourselves let down today. Anyway, that's just a little take of my my thoughts. What about Mowbray? What's his take of the match, and of course, the result? Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. I think you know we tried to prepare the team every game, and we prepared them for what we expected today, and. Um, Listen, let's give Blackpool some credit for the way they came out the blocks, really, and, and, and yet, you know, it's it's it. Were we ready? Did we come second best first half, undoubtedly, and, and that was the frustration in the dressing room was um, at half time. I think I think because the team is young and doing all right, or has been doing all right. I think these are really harsh 
but good lessons for the team that not every game is just a nice game of football. There, there are days when you have to roll your sleeves up and it becomes, you know, man on man really. You win, um, and we talked about that at half time and that go and win your individual battle because you had not many of our players won them in the first half and um, yeah so yeah game of two halves yeah probably I think um, really disappointed that we didn't come away with anything after the effort they put in second half and, and, and the, the fact that they managed to turn it around and um, um, but credit to Blackpool I, you know, I, I would say it's, it, the stadium is an amazing atmosphere it's um, for right from the first whistle it's amazing how they get their supporters behind the team and um, it was um, you know I can, I, you can you can see why they're doing alright and why they're a difficult team to play against I don't think it's about anything other than we as I say as a collectively as a team we didn't compete well enough for staff and and the frustration was that we talked a lot about how this game was going to be with that I think their their mentality would have been as an underdog and I think rightly or wrongly that's the way I portrayed it to the team and, and how an underdog fights and um, comes out scratching and kicking and fighting for every ball and um, and I think they did that better there was too many turnovers transitions going towards our goal rather than theirs and I think we managed to turn that around second half and if anything that's a slight on the team that they can lift it so much and um, why it didn't start from the first kick-off, I'm not sure, because there was a lot of talk about how this game was going to pan out and how they had to be ready for it. But um, great credit to their players that they, they managed to get on top for that first 45 minutes. You are on social media, take a look at it, shall we? Russell Prescott said, don't care for the game. Callum and I searched over 10 times between us. Very aggressively manhandled, accused of drugs with no firm reasoning. Declined entry for tw over 20 minutes. Sport all day. I maybe mean, uh, what the shit is that? Meanwhile, what's been going on social media? Let's take a look at it in the shower. Of course, New York Rovers said better. Uh, better in the second half, not good enough to make up for the first. Tom Schofield said, yes, we have injuries. Yes, it's a young side. But too many basic things not being executed correctly. Blackpool are coasting and seem to always have a passing option open. Rovers are labouring and have zero arte. That's, of course, uh, effort there. Uh, and some said, let's face it, our squad is so thin. Mid-table is where we belong. If we can't keep it, keep our first 11 fit. Jordan Kings, he said, can't rock up for 45 minutes and expect to win games. Far better second half, but where was that in the first? Ben the Boss Jackson said, can't keep, can't keep blaming the injuries of, of if uh, we have Lennon, we would have won. We lost again. Rovers of old, not taking chances and soft, poor defending cost us yet again. Didn't expect top six to see but we got uh, start being more uh, consistent. Meanwhile, four star, one, two, three, four, five, beaten by our local rivals, who will most likely finish above us with a lower budget than Mowbray has. Even Coventry, who have left the first division over, have overtaken us. Club is drifting. Meanwhile, Anthony has said, uh, Tony Mowbray records in local derbies is shocking. A lot better second half. Uh, we move on the Football League with Tony at the wheel. Uh, whatever. Uh, Tom Enwistle said, uh, it shouldn't no ma matter not having Lennon and Niambi in the squad when we are playing Blackpool. Our backups should be able to do a, d a job and defend. McGlaw and Carter in the first half, not fit to wear the shirt. Get them sent on loan to League 2. Goodness gracious me. Chris Moss says, not good enough. And sign that, that uh, a sign that the playoffs are absolutely not happening again. Barnes said, poor is the word I can think of. Feels like the performance against Cardiff was a lifetime ago. Serious work to do and I hope Tony's looking for a new striker already because we're going to need one as relying on Diaz isn't going to work Work all season. Meanwhile, TJ Cunningham said, "Piss poor. Anyone that doesn't rate Lennon, that is what it's like without him in the back. And um, no, no, we and we don't lose any of the game." against Huddersfield and these lot today with him at the back. Uh, the one who do said this one has been one of the worst halves of football from Rovers in quite some time. Magalore is not ready for this level yet and we are missing Dara somehow. Something awful. Uh, Stephen Blockley said, my thoughts is get Niambi, Lennon and Brereton in that boardroom and give them whatever they want before any signing. Uh, the rest of the championship then, shall we take a look at some of the results? Of course, Stoke did beat West Brom. Lastminute.com winner there. Uh, Coventry smashed Fulham 4-1. Goodness gracious me. Reading beat Cardiff. Of course, could be the end for Mick McCarthy on that one. Mill got an away win over Barnes. Bournemouth 2-1 win over, over, over of course uh, fellow chasers Sheffield United Hull City big away a home win for them over Middlesbrough of course Warnock might be back in trouble QPR 3-2 wins over Preston Peterborough did lose uh, to Bristol City at home uh, Luton Town nil 
Uh, Huddersfield nil. We've also got Derby nil, Swansea City nil, Birmingham. I think they lost three nil, something like that. The actual scoreline is blocked for me, but uh, you know what I mean. Anyway, of course, Bournemouth kicking ass and taking names. Of course, top of the table, 25 points at the moment, unbeaten as well. Three points clear of uh, West Brom, Coventry in third, Stoke fourth, uh, Fulham on fifth, and QPR back in the top six. Rovers into eighth. A win for us in the next match. We could get back in the top six. Uh, as to today's opposition, Blackpool are big movers. They're up to 12th right now, and they are just one point adrift of Blackburn, bloody Rovers, Derby, people, and Barnes are going down as it stands. Of course, Reading, I think they're going to have a points deduction to be added onto them soon, so we'll see about that. Now, next time around, of course, after the international break, it'll be uh, the Battle of the Midlands. Of course, it'll be West Brom, West Brom against Birmingham. Fulham will take on QPR. And then, of course, what do we have here? We have Forest against Blackpool, of course. Millwall against Luton Town. Bristol City against uh, Bournemouth. Preston against Derby. Middlesbrough against Peterborough. Reading against Barnsley. Huddersfield against Hull in the Battle of the H's. Stoke against, we'll go to Sheffield United. And Swansea take on Cardiff in the Battle of Wales. But the game of the day will be, of course, at Ewell Park as Rovers entertain Coventry City. But that, my friends, is all I've got for you. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash your thumbs up. If you're new, smash your subscribe. Get your bang out to date with all things Blab and Rose related, championship related, world football related. We got it all here. Boys, under one Ruski. Rovers need to get their act together. They need to clean up the back. Of course, Magalori needs to go out on loan. He's a bit, he's, he's out of his depth. Out of his depth. We need to get our uh, Van Henker back. We need to get Lennon in a chaos tip top shape. Uh, I don't think our, res our young Youngsters are that good enough. Um, and, and, and the fact that we started off so well, just like last season, and now we've hit a bit of a rough patch. We're going to go into Coventry in a, in, a, in a state which I think we've got to win. We cannot afford to lose that game or draw. We've got to go into it to win. And, of course, hopefully get back to winning ways and maybe push for top six. But that's, of course, to look forward to after the international break. But until then, give us some love and smash your thumbs up, smash your subscribe, check the links down below on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, and of course, Patreon. But until then, I'll see you soon. And until then, I'm out.